सो हेलो एवरी वन दिस इज मी अदनान गोहरी द फाउंडर एंड डायरेक्टर ऑफ आई वर्क स्टेशन I welcome you all to the Iox Station Bim series week 5 by Ahmed Topikullah. So give you an introduction about Ahmed. Ahmed has over 3 years of experience in Bim management. His area of interest are the construction simulation, virtual reality and augmented reality in construction and total quality management. He has a Bim consulting and training firm named TQM in Hyderabad. He has master's degree in civil engineering with emphasis on construction management from Bradley University, Illinois. So I would like to welcome Ahmed Topikullah to present a topic on BIM or impact of virtual reality. Yes, Ahmed, we can hear you now. Hi, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, Adnan has pretty much given my uh, introduction to you guys. Am I audible? Yeah, you are clearly audible. Uh, I just need to know how do I set up the presentation. Like how do I bring it up? You can start sharing your screen, Ahmed. Okay, I got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Is it up? Yeah, we can see your screen, Ahmed. Okay. So, uh, like, uh, coming into this series, uh, pretty much everybody knows what BIM is. I assume everybody knows is it is a digital digital representation of of you know the physical and functional features of a building uh, my focus will be on the impact virtual reality has on construction uh, this is from the this is from the perspective of construction management um, so yeah innovation in construction it is pretty stagnant uh, unlike other fields construction is very uh, slow to you know uh, absorb uh, innovation in its in its uh, in its process uh, one of the major reason being the statement right here our way is the only way this is uh, one of the most commonly heard uh, you know statements whenever you approach a builder or or an owner with uh, with an innovation that uh, you are you are probably trying to introduce into the into the industry so yeah uh, one of the major uh, risk factors in construction from my perspective that is from productivity concern is the uniqueness of projects uh, varied uh, locations open environment productivity safety and collaboration construction projects are pretty unique uh, as in you don't have uh, for a, for instance we can uh, compare it to the automotive industry where you have uh, where you are producing the same cars over and over and over again in construction you don't produce in mass what you do is just a second okay yeah so uh, what you do is uh you know you have unique uh, you have unique challenges with every project that you are doing you might be constructing road pillars you will have you will face certain issues on the, on the you know on the same block of two pillars that you are constructing and construction project you know you essentially you are constructing the building in an open environment open to all the um, you know uh, challenges uh, you face from the weather or high rise locations or you know uh, it's 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 a combination of all the issues that you were you might be facing uh, in easy terms we call that as forced measure, force majeure uh, it is the act of god uh, you are you cannot uh, you cannot you know overcome them you have to face them and move ahead with them and uh, productivity which is one of the biggest issues the construction industry faces i will speak about it in the my next slide safety in terms of safety construction industry has the worst of records and safety lack of safety is also one of the major causes of low productivity in construction and collaboration is again a very big issue in construction uh, you know uh, not having a collaborative environment up until obviously bim uh, you know uh, had projects stopping in the middle for various reasons design changes uh, you know cost related issues issues related to this uh, schedule or issues arising from the arbitrary issues so uh, my focus is on construction defects productivity productivity again um, as i told earlier i will be speaking in the later slides uh, in, in under productivity one of the biggest issues is changes uh, whenever uh, like essentially uh, as as engineers or architects we are able to interpret the design and perceive what we will be building however to the owner it's just a piece of paper with lines drawn on it so uh, as and when the building is being constructed as and when the building takes its form the owners of you know more often than not they come in and you know have us run around for several changes 
uh, they wouldn't like the wall they had constructed in the room or, or many other issues so this brings you know it, it stops the project midway for for you know carrying out the necessary design changes quantifying the cost related to the changes and again they might be again some arbitrary issues relating to the change and rework improper uh, quality improper craftsmanship improper workmanship is uh, one of the major causes of rework and this accounts to approximately two to three percent of over uh, runs on, a, on any given project accidents it's obviously related to uh, the safety not uh, following proper safety standards on the sites uh, improper handling of material and obviously the natural calamities that occur on the site whether it be weather related or any other issue or man-made issue these accidents uh, often cause the work to stop on the site and the uh, you know law might be involved in that resulting in in risk in, you know essentially resulting in flow of cash without the site proceeding any further uh, this is the gap that uh, i will be speaking on productivity uh, as you can see from the manufacturing industry when you draw a comparison to the, to the construction productivity we can uh, safely see that how much wastage a construction site produces by wastage i don't mean the materialistic waste i also mean by the uh, manufacturing waste that is the rework or change orders improper way of working unnecessary use of uh, you know uh, work methodology on the site uh, unnecessary uh, resources uh, being deployed on the site uh, you know labor related issues generally of the total wastage that is the 45 percent uh, of, of of you know non-productive time 28 percent alone is arises from waiting or resources instructions and rework um, essentially labors or just, yeah essentially uh, labors or the craftsmen on the side they uh, would come down they would you know start off the day and whenever they don't have what they would be requiring to carry out their day's task they would just sit around they would just lie around they won't be coming up and uh, asking you for the resources that they needed it might be tools or or any other material that they would be requiring to uh, take the day forward uh, this is one of the major reasons of low productivity in construction and waiting on instructions or improper instructions given to the to the work to the laborers on the site uh, uh, because they again they are unable to interpret what uh, the design documents say they would just be following the instructions given to them from the top uh, brass they would end up waiting on instructions if if they have no proper supervision on the site again uh, that also results in wastage of time because you will be paying them for the hours they spend on the site uh, rather than the work they are doing and again rework uh, rework arises from again uh, improper instructions given to the laborers or uh, them being unable to interpret what the design documents say or you know them being unable to perceive what the end product had to be this is where technology comes in um, so uh, just to give you a brief on, on what essentially bim is uh, this is the mclemy work uh, mclemy curve uh, when you follow the pre uh, preferred design workflow uh, that is the delivery process uh, ipd integrated project uh, integrated project delivery pro uh, method uh, as you can see, the, you can uh, see the blue curve over here in the pre-design, schematic design and design development stage. Whenever a change arises, the cost to carry out that change is, a far, uh, is, is far less compared to what it would have been if the project had already started. That is, if an owner is able to, you know, navigate through his facility even before a shovel has gone to the ground. If he's able to get that experience of how his facility would look like or if an engineer is able to get that, uh, you know, perspective of of exactly what issues he might be coming up and is able to you know uh, pick and point at those several issues and get those designs changed before even you know you have started the construction the cost of design change would be very low you won't have any wastage in terms of rework or you know taking down taking down the work that you have already done you so you're able to impact uh, that design uh, a lot more compared to what you would have in the construction stage at uh, later on so this is how the uh, the the BIM uh, platform is essentially built. The solution to all the problems that we have discussed is you know it's pretty simple. It's extensive planning, improved collaboration, and improved communication. All of that is again achieved by BIM. Uh, I will. So yeah, this is my expertise essentially. I uh, prefer to you know uh, call myself an expert in virtual simulations and uh, virtual reality. Uh, you know, visualizations, if you will. So uh, the benefits of BIM, 
uh, so I, I'm sorry, the benefits of virtual reality, the, it's the, the ability to review the design and rehearse the construction or simulate the construction of the facility in a 3D interactive and immersive environment. You know, it's, it's, it's give you the great ability to understand the building better, to perceive the design better, uh, and to, you know, understand the intent of, of the designer or the intent of why the building is being built. It gives you a lot more in your hand than uh, simply, you know, going by the conventional 2D drawing methods. And VR essentially is was developed for gaming experiences, uh, and it has evolved pretty much more than just being a gaming experience tool to much valuable tool in construction planning and management. And uh, you know, uh, just just for the sake of it, you know, spotting and resolving issues before the construction has started, as I was uh, talking to you guys earlier, uh, would you know give you a much greater value in the near term, uh, and uh, you know. Uh, near-term time and cost related uh, rework related issues and the long-term management uh, of, of the of the space long-term also could be you know delivering the customer or delivering the client uh, a space that he would he could have managed or used better would give you much more value to the project and also it allows the owners designers occupants and contractors to have much better understanding of the project and enables them to interpret the design we are good visual learners. It's no secret, you know, a picture speaks a thousand words. So when you are presenting, uh, you know, a simple 2D drawing or a 3D uh, photograph to a client who is unable to understand what the space, what, what space looks like, for instance, let's consider a bedroom. A client would be planning to use that space uh, in, in so and so manner. Having a VR headset over his head, he would be able to understand how big his room is. He would be able to feel it rather than just view it. Uh, so yeah, that 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 uh, gives that adds much more value to the project and helps the customer to make that key decisions. You know that would go a long way in making sure that his his uh, investment is used wisely and he's provided all you know the best possible outcome from his project. And also, uh, what happens is you know when you are able to reduce all the issues upfront, when you're able to identify the key errors and issues, and you know possible issues that you may have faced uh, moving into the project and identifying the risky elements of the project and you know putting much more emphasis on them as far as management is concerned uh, you know it goes a long way in uh, helping prevent time and cost overruns on a project uh, that is what management is all about you know it's, it's about you know preventing any overruns in the cost or or at the time on your project and also more importantly it reduces the request for information the rfis which can help you save thousands of man hours on a single project rfis alone result in you know a lot of a lot of hang time on the project uh, that that can be reduced uh, when when we have when you have such high level of uh, planning and communication tool and also it helps in you know communicating uh, between uh, trades and remote you know sort of uh, uh, remote access to the project to different clients that you get. RFI is request for information. Request for information. This arises when, uh, for instance, um, say uh, a guy installing a window on the on the site. He wanted uh, more or much more information than that was provided to him online. He would raise an RFI, which is request for information, asking what all exactly the technical details he, uh, the, the client wanted from him. That is when he raises the RFI. Using a B model, you would have all those, uh, all that information available on in the, within the model itself uh, compared to a conventional method. So yeah, BIM is more, much more than 3D modeling. It's also about information science and managing information better. Um, so here is an example of coordination meeting. How teams are, uh, how teams have evolved in, you know, meeting. Traditionally, what happened in coordination meetings was uh, people used to, you know, gather around, have a look at uh, conventional 2D plans, and uh, they used to, you know, sorry, they used to try uh, identifying risk on the project and what issues they they might have perceived on the project. So I'm going to play this video for you guys. Have a look at it. This essentially is a coordination meeting between different trades, between different planners and between different subcontractors wherein they uh, get into the immerse into the facility using virtual reality and augmented reality headsets and they are able to identify issues mark them up and send it to the concerned designers to uh, you know carry out uh, 
further changes on, the, on those uh, particular elements. Have a look at it. It's the exact same room in the last slide that you just saw. A little bit easier to understand. <laughs> now, using NVIDIA Holodeck, what we can do is we can uh, bring in the latest 3D model from BIM 360, and we can also bring in our trade subcontractors and have them collaborate in the environment at the same time. <clears throat> they can mark up any issues that they see, take a screenshot, and then publish that back up to BIM 360 as an RFI. But even better than that, they can actually go in and resolve the issues. We can hide walls, we can follow ducting, we can move pipes, and we can find a solution all in real time. So the beauty of immersive environments is that it allows us to collaborate in real time. This saves us time, and this saves us money on our projects. Yeah, it is, it is actually uh, BIM. It is actually a bit life, to be honest with you guys. So yeah, uh, for, for a case study, I've come up with uh, two, particular case, two particular industries, the healthcare industry and restaurant. Uh, in, in healthcare, the benefits that you get out of VR is efficient use of space uh, because more often than not, particularly, you know, when talking about India, you have, uh, you know, large scale, you know, you know, equipments coming down all the way from Germany. Uh, so you would be able to plan your spaces better and, you know, uh, how you would be fitting in all those equipment and, you know, minimizing staff travel. This is extremely important in case of healthcare and restaurants. Uh, because essentially you want the fastest route for your staff to 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 be able to access different uh, healthcare facilities different rooms improving sight lines uh, say uh, like uh, sight lines play an extremely important role in restaurant and healthcare uh, how is that is uh, say in a restaurant a supervisor would need to keep an eye uh, keep his eye on the entire you know all the all the tables and operational areas in, in his restaurant so uh, having him put on a VR would give him a better idea of, of you know, how, how good his, his site would be uh, in, the, in the facility. Same goes with the healthcare. You know, you could have the nurse station particularly. Uh, they require a level of site uh, to be able to you know, keep an eye on, 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 on the patients and the, and the various monitors they have up there in the room. And also you know, uh, simulating facilities for, uh, for you know, yeah, simulating simulating facility for training. Uh, so uh, I'll, this would be better explained in the in the next video. Again, space management. Uh, you know, you would be bringing in a lot of furniture. You would be bringing a lot of uh, you know equipments. That and using VR would probably give you a better idea of you know how big or small your space is. Uh, and simulating facility for training. Uh, it's you know. People would like to save a lot of time uh, while the building has been constructed. So uh, having a VR of that exact facility will help them, you know, speed up their training of, of training of staff uh, rather than waiting for the facility to be constructed and, you know, spending weeks or months um, on a plot to train their staff around the facility. Uh, using VR headsets, they are able to, you know, smartly train their staff beforehand, before even the building is constructed. Uh, this way, they save a lot of time in, you know, operation. They could straight away, you know, on from day one, they could move into the facility and start working. So, yeah, this is a unique video, actually. Uh, this clip has been taken from a movie by the name The Founder. Uh, uh, it's it's based on the story of of two brothers, uh, the McDonald brothers. They were the they were the founders of McDonald's, the fast food franchise we all love. Um, so yeah, uh, they, these two brothers, you know, uh, they thought of out of the box and they wanted to you know reduce the cost of 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 what they sell. Uh, obviously, keeping the quality in the, the best in best in class. Uh, so what they did is they they charted out an ex, you know extensive they they did extensive extensive planning and simulations of their kitchen to make sure that their staff was being used rather than they they, they were focused on reducing wastage arising from you know motion of of the staff. This is what we call as motion analysis into total quality management. Have a look at the video, then I will speak. And you were gonna love how we did it, Dick. You gotta tell him. Tennis court? Okay, he brings me up to this tennis court and he's drawn this line, the exact dimensions of our kitchen. Sink on the right, Sink. extruder on the extruder. left. Extruder. Bagging and hood. Hood. Okay. Garnish, garnish. This, this is uh, burger finish. Got it. And then this is burger slide. We could just move those. 
Okay. Want to mix your soft drinks? Okay. We bring out our whole staff, and we have them go through the motions, making pretend burgers and fries. All right, Steve, anticipate that. You got to keep the tray level. Okay. And Dick is running around with this stick, marking where all the equipment should be. Tuck in. Tony, are you going to skip the pickles when we're really doing it? They do it over and over, hashing it out, choreographing it like some crazy burger ballet. What's going on over there? Yes. No. No. <sighs> Everybody, stop! Stop! Garnish one. Garnish two. You've got pickles, you've got onions. It's a goddamn hamburger. Come on, clear off. Let's, let's clear off. It's time for the pink chalk. And then rip, rip your orange. See, see all this open space here now? We've rearranged the fry situation, so now it's stage left, the deep fryer stage right. Begin. That's great. Come on, guys. They're pretty tied up here. Yeah, watch it. Lazy Susan. It's the timing of the Lazy Susan. Those are finished burgers. You can't. Hold it. I, I still think there's a third version. What do you want to move? I want to move everything. Back to stage left, please. I think we got it all drawn. This is better. You done all right? I think so. I guess, I guess look, let's assume our battle station. OK, OK. Finally, after about six hours of this, we get it just right. It's a symphony of efficiency, not a wasted motion. Good form, Jasper. <laughs> Feel good about those pickles. Catch up. Use your laser. <laughs> Put your back into it, Seth. And pickles, and pickle, and mustard! We take the layout to a builder, custom build the kitchen to our exact specs. Ta-da, the Speed D system is born, the world's first ever system to deliver food fast. It is totally revolutionary. Yeah, uh, so yeah, this is what I was talking about, the space management part, you know. Uh, these people had to rent out uh, a badminton court and you know they had to run several simulations over you know a couple of weeks or so uh, so you know if 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 technology was available back then and uh, if they were able to you know put on vr headsets and if they were able to train their staff they would have saved a lot of money you know in in in, in rather you know they would have had to rent out the that uh, badminton court or you know run several wasted uh, uh, you know sessions of of people coming in and you know uh, planning the fastest possible possible road. This is one of the reasons McDonald's is a success. You know, they have a smooth functioning, you know, layout in every one of their restaurants. So this is not something that, uh, you know, an architect would be able to, you know, perceive, uh, you know, because the, more often than not, whenever a restaurant or something of, of this facility has been constructed, uh, the, the, the person who, uh, who would be in charge of, of the kitchen or the head chef would come in and have everything moved to his own requirements, to, to his own comfort. So uh, having a VR would have, you know, uh, remove this wastage from the construction. And this could go all the way up to, you know, saving about 17% of, 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 of a conventional project costs. So yeah, uh, that's it from me. Uh, hopefully I'll have uh, more for you guys in the, in the next sessions or so, uh, whenever we plan. I will I would probably like to have another second one. Well, I'd work, I would work that out with Adnan. And I will probably have my own device ready and up for, uh, which will live live uh, you know streaming for of that working workflow sure we can even take a few uh, questions as of now from the people if anyone have any question they can ask yeah sure rajesh has some questions so i'll just uh, unmute you oh. rajesh yeah hi hi rajesh go ahead yeah uh, can, can you listen to me yeah yeah, uh, just, just wanted to ask you that uh, the prior video which you showed of the robots, what platform mm -hmm. was it? Uh, it was uh, Revit Live actually. Revit Live as well as as well as well uh, you have this plugin by the name Iris VR. Uh, it can yeah. be uh, integrated in Navisworks and you can have a virtual coordination meeting with, with all the stuff that you would be needing. 
and they wouldn't they, it's not necessary that everybody needs to be present in the room you, you could be sitting in a different part of the world and you could have a coordination meeting in the facility that you would be building um, uh, another thing was is this really used in india at this level uh, to be honest with you it, it's not but however i have used it on, on one of the projects that i did uh, okay. i tried you know i tried bringing up the videos that i had made but it's, it's uh, due to some technical issues i couldn't bring them up uh okay. so yeah, i have used and benefited from them we were able to save approximately you know roughly 17% of the, the project cost by um, by applying this uh, vr and you know several other features of them okay because uh, I, i would introduce myself i'm rajesh i'm an architect from india okay. i'm uh, i'm doing my masters in finland and i'm working with a company called tietor we are into this uh, bim and big room stuff so we use this platform called glue yeah not bim 360 glue this only glue so we use it it's a finish company who uh, come up with the same interface and something like that so i i know about iris vr also but i uh, wanted to ask you like what industry are you like uh, what projects are you looking at are you looking at healthcare and a restaurant or other other heavy construction projects also well i have worked on residential healthcare and and you know it, it was actually a school so i'm not sure what they would call it a big studio building uh, to be honest with you okay and what part of india it is happening hyderabad okay wow this is great <laughs> but again but I, it was never a requirement from the client side it was something i had to do voluntary to you know give them an ex- promote promote, promote this kind of promote the technology as well great as to job. get the work to, as great well as to give the job you know <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. But Great again, it, it it helps you in retaining those clients because this guy he came back to me uh, for construction of his own house once I did some other projects for him. So it helps in retainage. But again, if you give them once for free, it keeps repeating. You know. Okay, but but this is great. Like promoting these kind of platforms is a very good uh, initiative. I think. Yeah. Like being an architect, I think I I, I tried to push it in Pune. Mm-hmm. but uh, it, it i mean i don't know how how they take it because people are really uncomfortable wearing the vr headsets you know at first you know it could obviously cause some some to a, a small scale of nausea to people who are using it for the first time but yeah uh, it is what it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah thanks yeah. thanks uh, so uh, ajaz and mohammad ikram ali have pretty similar question application is used for vr Uh, there are several tools. Uh, Revit, uh, right at the top, you could use Revit and have multiple plugins like Iris VR and Scape uh, 3D uh, to simulate a VR environment. Or else you could even be using Unreal Engine. Uh, it is a gaming platform. It takes a lot of work, but again, the output is much better than uh, than what you see in Revit. the equipment uses oculus rift uh you know i got it from the us so i'm not sure how costly it is in india but uh, i didn't get a quotation from uh, from reliance digital and they were asking about upwards of 70000 mm-hmm. ah no problem Adnan, can you unmute Rajesh? He wants to ask something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Unreal Engine or Unity? Which one preferable? Unreal. Uh, I have only worked on Unreal, so I can say Unreal. Okay, like uh, throwing the model to Unreal on, and uh, then giving an VR stand. Uh, you know, uh, Revit, 3ds Max, and yeah. then on to Unreal Engine. Okay, so post processing in Max and then throwing it to Unreal. Engine. Revit. it also depends on what what people are asking for you know we could also have vr in what somewhere but but this gives a static image like how can you involve vr in unreal no no like yeah what, obviously when, when you're talking about a combination of things uh, by using vr what you can do is create a panoramic uh, image which can be uh, you know which can be coded in html to provide you a static vr rather than one where you can travel around the facility okay okay factors essentially is 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 about the lost opportunity in in you know uh, planning extensively to be able to you know uh, identify the risk element on the project or or to be 
uh, able to identify uh, the wastage in productivity in terms of productivity i'm um, sorry so yeah that, that is that those were some things that we had considered uh, typically what 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 we were, what we did on the project that i will be uh, showing up in the next uh, in, the, in the next session is uh, we compared our rates like what we had achieved per unit to the to what the market generally pays and we were able to come up with the number that is uh, that that that's like 17% reduction in in the in the in the rate per unit of construction so essentially yeah it, it's uh, it's time related and more about labor productivity yes sir i think you have some question yeah uh, another thing was like what was the uh, what do you say standard exchange format was it ifc not ifc uh, because uh, you know to radius max it pretty much uh, straightforward and then you have fpx on to uh, unreal engine so not we we kind of had uh, created interoperable uh, models okay so uh, so unreal is uh, able to like uh, import uh, obj FB, or fbx fbx straight away it pick up fbx with all the all the functional uh, characteristics of the building or even you know even more it can even take up uh, uh, revit models directly by a plugin by the name data smith data spin data smith data smith okay yeah Okay, uh, it would be really good, Ahmed, if you could, uh, you know, just uh, put uh, the workflow and you know, just uh, show uh, what do you say, like a like a time lapse or something, like how do you did that? Because the thing, uh, what I think is like being an architect and all the guys who are in the group. Sometimes I feel that we all talk about all this jargon of VR, AR, and everything. Obviously, but standards but are not thing, But the thing is, like you know, we are architects. You know, we are not technical guys. Like from one, from what I have learned here in one and a half years working in Finland. It's like uh, obviously they are, they, these guys are way ahead in terms of gaming industry and stuff. So what I could understand is like we talk all about the yarn, but we we are never able to you know visualize it. So what I'm saying is like if you could put this on, it would be really beneficial. Uh, Adnan, what? Okay. Uh, yeah, I will, I will actually. Yeah. You will, uh, what I will do is I will actually prepare a workflow uh, kind of information exchange sheet. Uh, according to the BIM standards. I'll prepare that information exchange sheet and hopefully Adnan will have it up on, on, on the various platforms. Sure, sure, I can do that for you. Yeah. I, I've made note of, 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 you know, what the information exchange requirements are and I'll, I'll get back to you. Nice, nice point you made. Yeah, yeah, thanks. So yeah, Ajaz has a question, is AR simultaneously used along with VR? Yes, Ajaz, uh, I think that it's something that is used more for augmented, the augmented reality part is something that is used more for, you know, uh, furniture or space management uh, or, or more importantly for planning. VR is just for an immersive experience. What the, the video you saw in the first though with the robots, it's actually augmented reality, it's AR. And the, the device they use might be Microsoft Mixed Reality headsets. They, they are manufactured by various uh, IT companies like Dell, Lenovo, everyone has their own. It's based on Microsoft's uh, mixed reality uh, platform. And we have Kunal Chaudhary asking, how much uh, VR is implemented in engineering means is it limited to buildings only or other structures like dams, roads and bridges? Uh, yeah, uh, actually uh, countries that have uh, picked up this uh, technology are using uh, augmented reality particularly for identifying uh, they have firstly they have actually prepared models of, of existing conditions like like um, for instance talking about infrastructure they have uh, ready-made they have uh, available models to identify what the uh, what the uh, what the land beneath this looks like for instance they could have they have all the data of, of power lines or drainage lines or water lines running underneath it so by using augmented reality, uh, you will be able to identify these elements and be able to work around them rather than, you know, digging into them and causing damage. So yeah, this is one of those uses and uh, one of those uses. And again, it is, it can be used for bridges, roads. Uh, I'm not sure it is being used in India, obviously, uh, but elsewhere, uh, worldwide, it's being applied. There's a question from Chaitanya. Chaitanya, are you there? Yeah, hi. Yeah. Hi, Edmund. Uh, this is Chaitanya. 
and uh, like uh, as rajesh said i think so it will be helpful for us to uh, like a to uh, like for the uh, if you prepare the workflow it will be helpful like what are the softwares to you be used for the vr and there are a lot many applications like as you said like uh, irs and enscape and uh, uh, lumion is also i think so they will be used for uh, lumion also maybe i think better uh, if we if you could share the workflow uh, i think cool to us okay okay done okay then i will i will actually have a information exchange sheet up i will share it with them and he will probably you know uh, share with everybody every one of you guys look so look out for it and uh, lumion actually yeah. will only give you a static image rather than a dynamic one you won't be able to travel within the facility uh, lumion only has uh, only has the vr uh, uh, it only generates a static image of the facility so you won't be able to travel around in the facility what you will be able to do is just look around okay yeah fine and uh, yeah okay Sorry. so yeah definitely i will i will put the information exchange sheet up and isaz had a question how vr is efficient to solve project management related issues so yeah project management you know it's about uh, making sure that things got done on time yeah, under the cost and uh, with the quality that has been planned for uh, so yeah by using vr you are able to identify some uh, risks it it helps in extensive planning uh those are there are several things that goes unnoticed and when you are planning on 2d uh so by using vr you are able to identify such issues again as i said i will be presenting another 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 session on the same topic i will be have i will be putting up a case study i couldn't do it due to some technical issues with the vr headset over here so in the next session definitely um, i will have that up for you guys and i'll i'll give out a case study and numbers that that we achieved on on the project that we did So, anyone else? Any other question? Uh, I, uh, I have, yeah, Chetanya is here, and just I want to know uh, if it is a Revit. Just we have a system configuration like minimum four GB RAM. It should be there to uh, configure our Revit software, and like similarly, if there uh, is there any system configuration for these applications uh, to work on these we. actually yeah, i i just uh, got done ordering a system so i will be able to give it to you straight away uh, you need okay. card which is vr ready and it has minimum of 6 gb uh, video ram uh, it has to be a dedicated one and more importantly uh, the biggest issue uh, while you are using an oculus rift or htc vive which are vr headsets the biggest issue you face is it won't be connecting to each and every laptop laptops need to have a dedicated uh, a uh, graphic card hdmi port rather than the one that bridges uh, the gpu as well as uh, the the graphic card so the traditional ones don't uh, like i would say 90% of the laptops even though they might have that uh, that you know that functional capability of the graphic card but they won't be able to accept uh, oculus rift due to merely due to the fact that manufacturers uh, connect your hdmi port to the on on integrated uh, graphic uh, chip rather than the uh, dedicated one so yeah uh, you need to have a minimum of uh, 6gb vr ready uh, graphic card uh, okay. the one i use is uh, nvidia 1060 uh, 6gb version and in terms of uh, processor you need ninth generation that uh, you you got to have it and ram pretty much 8gb does it for you uh, but yeah uh, the minimum this is the minimum that you have to take in as adnan was taking as uh, adnan or i guess rajesh was talking about the nauseating effect it has on people uh, who are putting on the headset for the first time so the lesser configured configured system you have although it might accept uh, these devices but it will have some latency issues and it might cause people uh, a certain degree of of you know uh, how do we say nausea okay fine um, ahmed i have a, another question like i don't know Uh, whether it will it is uh, right or wrong uh, can i ask <laughs> because i i didn't work a uh, uh, vr up to now oh, absolutely go ahead uh, actually just i have a doubt like uh, if uh, we have to show it to the client mm -hmm. it should be shown through application or else uh, after exporting from that application we can show them in in the vr uh, do you do you play pubg by any chance Uh, no sorry <laughs> so yeah anybody who plays uh, those games they would be able to you know see how we navigate on those games 
so this is exactly yeah, how you have, uh, yeah this is exactly yeah, I have seen the screen and I have tried, but uh, not get interested on that. Okay. But I don't know. Okay, so yeah, exactly. that's that's exactly how uh, that's exactly how you travel around on, on anything that is made by using Unreal Engine. Uh, using a VR is an option again. Uh, if you use it, you would be able to provide them better experience. But uh, merely using a, a laptop itself is sufficient. You know? Yeah. Uh, uh, actually, my question was like, uh, I will use the VR uh, yeah. by using. Uh, uh, as you said, like if you go with the Enscape or whatever it may be, Unreal mm -hmm. Engine, mm -hmm. uh, we, we need to use that VR in that application only, other else we can export that video uh, and we can use the VR. No, no, you will have to, you will have to have those uh, plugins and the software okay. up and running. Yeah, you'll have to use it inside those applications okay. because it is now. Yeah, actually, uh, I work with uh, yeah. Lumion and Enscape, but uh, just I have prepared the walkthrough, but okay. I didn't go with the VR. So what I have done is I have prepared the walkthrough video and I have exported and uh, okay. I have submitted it to the client. So I, that's why uh, that's why I'm asking like after the export, who's the equipment or there's uh, within the app only we, we need to use. Okay, I'll just uh, share a link. You guys can open it up and look at one of the projects that uh, we had done. This is the HTML coded static, uh, um, what do we say? The VR, just a second, I'm bringing it. Okay. okay, fine. I'll look yeah, So, it. yeah, this is how you can show them. But again, this this won't allow you to travel inside or outside of the facility on its own. You will have to have multiple such files. And you can also, what you can do, what you can do is uh, uh, have a Google Cloud device, which is extremely cheap. Uh, you can use your own cell phone to uh, put that. In, into that device and, and give them sort of experience yeah okay yeah. thank you yeah rajesh the encoding you know it's, it's uh, pretty simple you know straightforward actually uh, we created several images together and simply uh, you know by using the php script i guess uh, uh, via panoramic player the image and it sits up and running over there can, can you put that workflow also? That would be also great. Yeah, sure. Uh, next time, definitely it will be up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks, thanks. There's a question from Izaz. Izaz, are you there? I, uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Uh, yeah, how about the return on investment uh, to the clients or the consumers, those who are using VR technology for their project? You know, to be honest, if you're asking about architects or designers, uh, the return on investment will be roughly two projects. That's it. You will have a everything that you have invested back okay. uh, to the owners to the owners upfront they won't be able to see it because you know uh, when you complete the project and show them uh, what what the market faces what the issues he would have faced if he had not gone with you guys uh, mm -hmm. yeah he would be able to you know judge how much he has saved how, how about uh, contractors yeah uh, contractors again you know generally they prefer more the work the better it is so, so contractors uh, definitely, you know, they won't be in favor of having something that reduces their work because rework again will give them more money. But in terms of training their, uh, you know, uh, their unskilled labors, uh, if you will. So yeah, that's that's something that would benefit them. That's mm -hmm. on the okay. case study. Definitely, I'm going to show to you guys how. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we had uh, we actually faced that kind of problem on our side because uh, the manpower that uh, we had to bring in because the site was on the outskirts, so mm. we couldn't bring some skilled uh, laborers to carry out some, uh, so, you know, some tight jobs, if if you will. So oh, yeah, yeah, we have we trained them using VR, and you know, we got some good results out of it. Oh, that's great. Mm. Yeah, I must get a showcase about the Unreal Engine. Yeah, Unreal Engine essentially it's it's it like actually you can share your screen if you'd like to show us. Uh, actually, I don't I don't have that on my laptop. I'll have to uh, use my uh, workstation that's that's being used by someone on my office. So yeah, I'll I'll have some screenshots. About it. So yeah, it's, it's a free tool actually. It's free for some time. I'm not sure how long they will keep it free for. So it's a free tool. It's a gaming engine. Uh, it's essentially a post processing uh, uh, software. Mm -hmm. Right. It's, yeah, you know, obviously, it is not. It is not something that is exclusively made for architectural visualization. 
it, it's the gaming engine that has been multi-purpose for for you know for, for visualization of architecture. Yeah, uh, there's one question from me, Emma. Like you have mentioned the term IPD, the integrated project delivery, and I believe like you have also applied it on a mosque project. Can you share yeah. a brief about like how was the outcome and what 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 are the challenges that you have faced uh, during that project? Yeah, essentially, uh, you know, being a religious structure, the funding was you know very you know. I wouldn't say less, but it, the cash flow was slow. Uh, this was right up there uh, with the issues that we had faced. And again, uh, uh, one of the one of the topmost issues we faced was the architecture over there. Uh, they had some, uh, you know, uh, contemporary or or classic uh, that that uh, that the workers had to do over there. And the people who specialize in that. Uh, where you know they they wouldn't travel all the way to the outskirts to do that job. So we had to hire the local manpower and train them using VR. Uh, explain them how these uh, these things are to be done. We also ran some simulations, 4D simulations, just for the sake of, uh, sake of explaining them sequencing of of you know of casting some arches over there. So yeah, that uh, this technology you know it helped us. Uh, we what we did is instead instead of getting steel templates made uh, for you know constructing arches. We did some tweaking around. We, uh, I like, I actually, I will, uh, you know, go in deep in the in the next uh, presentation uh, about about how we achieved that. But however, uh, in brief, we saved approximately seventeen percent compared to the market, and we were able to provide them what they wanted. And again, uh, the the guy who was getting it built, he had only come to our firm for um, design consulting and looking at VR. You know, I'm not sure what click, but he gave us the project. So yeah, that helped us. Um, Ahmed, like a lot many people have no, no prior experience of coding and like you said for Unreal Engine coding experience is required. Like if, if someone as a pressure would like to go into this field and explore it about like with a gadget as well and by exploring the BI models in the virtual reality or augmented reality. And so, so how you suggest these people to explore the VR in the BIM? You know, uh, code on, on Unreal Engine is very similar to Dynamo. It's a bit more difficult, but again, anybody who knows what Dynamo is would be able to learn Unreal Engine. Uh, so, or, or and also again, I, the coding part is not required for basic level modeling or basic level visualizations. If you're going for advanced level animations, that is, if you want, for instance, a door to open whenever you walk close to it, that is when this coding is required. Other than that, you're good to go. You know, again, if, if you're curious about it, you will definitely, you know, learn how these things work. Okay. Right. I think like uh, th this uh, VR application would be mostly useful by the real estate owners, the builders, and yeah. I think so. And so how yeah, again, again, uh, again, again, uh, good point you made about real estate owners. Say a uh, building is being constructed, everything has been sorted out. Uh, the builders, what they look to do first is create, you know, they look to build that uh, demo uh, sort of flat or demo villa beforehand to be able to provide the client's experience and have them, you know, pre-book those buildings or flats or units before they are done. Uh, using VR, you're able to, you know, give them that experience even before you have started constructing the site. Uh, so yeah, this can be handy to them. Obviously, they will have to uh, make that demo flat or villa or a demo unit. But again, we uh, will offer them that extra bit of technology to be able to, um, you know, help those clients perceive what they would be getting beforehand. Ahmed, are you there? Yeah. Yeah, Ashwini has a question. Yes, Ashwini. Uh, yeah, Ahmed. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so actually, I want to understand, like uh, currently. Uh, the capabilities of VR is uh, is like uh, we get. I just, just want to understand on that. Like we get a project, and you have kind of a, like a static mode to present the output. Like, hey, I want uh, the VR model to be done for uh, one BHK room or something like that, and then you give the output. Okay, that is one thing. Another thing which I want to understand. Let's say. Um, I want to really understand the VR interface with the software like Nervous Talk or Simulator. 
hello yeah yeah so yeah so let's say we are doing a coordination okay big coordination where we are managing different models and uh, classes between the different uh, um, model elements which include fire electrical or plumbing or structure architecture and let's say we want to take a step ahead and we want to really dive into the vr so how efficient it is and you know like how feasible it is to really take the client to make them understand by um, using the software interface like this work or synchro for schedule and planning have you have you tried out those those kind of interface uh, you know the the project that i have currently done on vr uh, it, it did not we, we were it was fully limited to structural and architectural uh, you know modeling so we did not have mep so we did not go through the navis works uh, you know flash detection and all those things so we did not work on that platform however it was uh, it was it was purely for the purpose of uh, having that owner experience his facility and you know if he had any change or change request he would do it upfront rather than you know having it when when they go into it however what you mentioned is uh, you know extremely possible it is uh, 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 it is being done uh, the owners are able to you know go into that facility again uh, navisworks pretty much would be an engineering model rather than a finished architectural architectural you know uh, visualization if you will so uh, i would say that this is something that is more uh, on a planning stage for for you know planners to be able to get into that facility and identify elements that they find would be uh, risky or you know uh, for for example a, 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 a you know a path uh, uh, where you would have to be lifting a generator into it that that, that limitations and everything would be they, they would be able to identify them beforehand using navis works but in terms of uh, clients they would be uh, more interested into you know uh, ar- architectural visualization and arctic uh, visualization if you will somebody who would be finding any issue in any part of the building uh, which is being constructed they would be able to you know use that uh, that augmented reality headset to identify it and send it back to the uh, concerned uh, consultant to uh, fix it and send it back again rather than having the the uh, conventional rfi raise rfi method so yeah that that's something that is being used which to... which which part of turner is using is it like india or uk or oh, sorry us 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 yes yeah. okay okay that's nice actually i was in turner uh, okay. last year yeah okay yeah so they okay. they are doing it over there they have they had to actually uh, make that uh, mm-hmm. set of it's not something that comes mm-hmm. factory so yeah quite it's... interesting yeah quite interesting But again so you know, so you, i yeah yeah yeah, yeah right, right. so currently currently if i just want to understand like um, the client's requirement from the vr is in the architectural visualization right it depends like they want to it depends you know it, it, there was this more than architecture it could also be about space management about you know space uh, management space right management. right And for instance mep mm-hmm. there are certain clients who would want uh, to conceal the the you know mep uh, mep whatever the equipment is having problems so they would be requiring to conceal them so even mm-hmm. them it would be beneficial again it's artist you know architectural part but again that would be beneficial to them that's true that's true right but again you know it's great i mean yeah, yeah yeah it's not something that they are looking for it's something that they come across and don't like Uh, they came across and they don't like yeah no i mean what i'm saying is it's not something that they would be coming in with a mind made up this this might be something that they were they were not expecting in the design and they experience it in vr for instance just showing them a 3d uh, image of yeah. the would not be able to deliver that bit of information so uh, this is mm-hmm. something that they, they would just be able to pick up and say that i don't like certain Uh, things right uh, right correct yeah. correct correct so they can make quick decision on the on the time when they are obviously they are in the vr model yeah. yeah so how many instances have been like that where their client have really got benefit like this like being in the vr model they have given suggestions like hey i want quickly to get place like this and then you guys have made it quickly and then achieve some sort of thing so the num- the numbers from conventional uh, you know delivery is just like 7% up to 7% is the change related uh, non productive issues so mm-hmm. you can expect that that is how much they would be able to bring up okay 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 
and uh, in right, in, yeah. in, the, in the case study that uh, we would be presenting in the next part uh, we had this guy come into the into the facility and he was he wanted a opening from mm-hmm. between two floors like like he wanted a certain uh, you know piece of uh, slab uh, deducted from the design so yeah, that that was like about uh, 30 by 30 piece of uh, concrete that we had to remove uh, which mm-hmm. would have which would have been difficult had he came in later we had to make some changes to the structure as well uh, mm-hmm. so that's, that can be you know we could in the end you know i will probably prepare uh, uh, you know benefit benefit sheet for him that that they that he got out of them and i would think, right exactly because because that benefit seats are something which which will really help us to stay obviously. strong on on these parts because obviously. we get the questions and people uh, want the you know like the real value that we are obviously. providing and obviously. these these real time countermeasures which we can provide in terms of value engineering seats yeah. will really help us to win more projects that's true obviously what they feel is uh, they they want to see that the, the amount that they had say, that they have actually ended up saving they want to see that cash that is the amount that Absolutely. they did not spend. Yeah. Exactly, to... exactly. And yeah. exactly. And if you are able to quantify those things in the benefit seats, yeah. I think that is the best thing uh, for us to move forward in yeah. that direction. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm even in, like moving forward regarding the construction planning and construction yeah. monitoring. Uh, I mean, like using VR technology in that. So actually, actually, I, actually, I had I had a device yeah. in the in the BIM boot camp. I was uh, I was there in the first day and left in the same evening. I couldn't meet you. Uh, you were you were at the event in the second day, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was second day. Second day was my session. Yeah. So yeah, any more questions? Yes, uh, Rajesh has some questions. Yeah, sure. Uh, I think I asked it already. He answered. Okay. So, is there any other question from the participants? So yeah, Jaydeep is answering. C plus plus is just first thing. Yeah. Question like, how did you did you took took the courses on Udemy or was it uh, on Coursera? Yeah. Yes, I suggest you were asking something like Udemy or Coursera. Not yet. However, if everybody, you know, if if you guys want the easy way out of this then the best uh, you know putting up cost for that later on so, so you could you guys could download pin mission it, it doesn't require the you know coding part and all functional has some limitations compared to unreal engine but that would probably be able to you know uh, help you out in using vr and the they also offer courses free of cost for that. Yeah. Huh. But what do you think? Enscape or Twin Motion? Which one is better? Enscape would be much quicker because when you have the uh, let's say you have the Enscape plug in it to Revit, you would be able to generate uh, VR much quicker than you know, again you will have to, you know, export all the files from Revit onto Twin Motion and you know apply all the materials again and you know that would yeah. be time consuming for you. So instead, yeah. you could go ahead with Enscape, but Twin Motion is free of cost. So yeah, there's a difference. Yeah. How much time uh, does it take to prepare VR model for 12 for building? It depends on how quick you are. Uh, generally, uh, generating VR isn't that big of a task. It's about detailing the building, just like you conventionally do. VR is just a perspective, so it wouldn't take much of a time. Please ping the name of the software. We are not able to hear it clearly. I'll just uh, put a small workflow over here. Uh, just when you're putting it, I just wanted to ask Adnan. Adnan, if you could do a session on, you know, like 
what is VR and what is AR because there's a huge dilemma between like what the hell is VR because when I was in India in Pune and I was talking in BNC College of Architecture half of the people didn't understand what is VR sure everyone was just asking me what is what is VR you know I, I think that is very important for the architectural students like they must understand what exactly is VR is it just a publishing platform or something because when we guys talk then it, it becomes really difficult like Ashwan is not talking directly about operations and on that phase but then the students are really uh, architectural students are really it, it gets really difficult for them yeah. Yeah, there's a few for you Ayman can you see the chat box yeah I've put it up uh, I've put up the software that I had used in, in the in the sequenced order and uh, yeah. so uh, in the next in the next part we'll definitely, ask, uh, uh, we'll definitely list out the difference between AR and VR and, uh, out. and also we will have a live stream of the VR and the way it is uh, like, like the way we work over here uh, in the next uh, part definitely we'll have it up yeah, and another email like a uh, few few of the participants were asking about your contact number. If it's possible, can you share your contact number with the, them? Uh, definitely. I'll just I'll just write it up. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Shani. Yes, sir. Shani. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we can. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, um, I just want to know, like, uh, regarding uh, the way uh, I think the Rajesh was also speaking in terms of like AR. So, uh, have we got any kind of like um, hands on on the AR capabilities in terms of uh, project that we have delivered? I actually have a case study that I have done on my own, uh, uh, like from the design stage to the execution also. So yeah, if that yeah. Uh, that is something that we will be presenting in the next uh, in the next part. Okay, okay, and okay. Including okay. all the recommendations and all the questions that people have asked coming and all. Then I think working around with this Unreal engines and all is is more like if you are more curious, you can get around with that. Yeah. Uh, so the software teams are someone who will be very core developer in time. So like C has has or C plus plus or maybe like uh, Python and all. So that level is very high, but what we are doing is kind of um, where we can easily grasp these things if you have the curiosity. So yeah, somewhere we are in the mid right now, but yeah, if something requires very hardcore coding, then we may need some support. Okay. Okay, uh, so anybody else with any questions? Uh, because like it's, it's uh, late for me, I have to leave from the office for home, so. Uh, hopefully, uh, in the next uh, part, we will have a much uh, broader perspective on VR, uh, including a case study as well as, uh, you know, with the well include everything that uh, you guys have asked. Uh, so, yeah, we are hoping, like, thanks everybody for making the session exciting and thanks, Adnan, for hosting. And thank you, Emma, for coming, uh, uh, thank you, Emma, especially for coming, coming, uh, coming here and giving us the time and explaining about the VR. And it's really a Cable that you take out so much of time from yours for getting uh, up this effort.